after the era was found essentially an inhabited farm until in 1899. As a flight depot of the Uganda railway was built, which soon became the railway's headquarters. After an outbreak of plague, the original town was burnt down. Lying at mile 327 of the Uganda railway, it was at an altitude of 5,575 feet. quickly from mere collection of food and iron building. The water supply came from reservoir 13 miles northwest and electric power from a plant 12 miles northeast. Formerly only the there were three banks, the Uganda two Railway, English daily newspapers and the theater the and several and government offices. This being Anglican, The main thoroughfare was government road leading from the station to one of the chief suburbs, Parklands. The less fully developed road through road ran at right angles. Sixth Avenue leading by to the government and house Roman the Catholic, hospital, the was school and the chief of official residences. The main suburbs were the Hill, Parklands, Riverdale, Kilimani, Rongaville. Asians and Africans lived in East Sydney Along Township. Sixth Avenue the East. was the Anglican Church, the Post Office, there was and the There were pretty suburbs four miles from the Ruby called Mudaiga. Some bungalows and Mudaiga Country Club, a prominent feature of social life, had been built there. It is interesting to hear what outsider thought of 1920s Nairobi. Margaret Beram visited in, visited in 1929 and, and had to say this. Either Nairobi itself is a disappointing town. I had expected something rather smart and well built. It is one of the sharpest and shoddiest towns I have seen in my travels. The Supreme Court is like a abandoned warehouse. As far as I could see, Nairobi was largely peopled with young men. Some had revolvers in their belts. They imparted a certain reckless Wild West atmosphere to the town, but some of them, judging by their looks, would have to be very careful if they were not to become poor whites in the South African sense. Certainly, on the surface, life is very charming in Nairobi and very sociable with unlimited
Nairobi's colonial years were marked by racial inequality. Legislation limited the ability of native Africans to own properties and created a past system by which their movements in the capital were tightly controlled. Natives were also forced to endure British paternalism, which ranged from lectures on etiquette to the state discouraging native owned businesses, ostensibly to prevent them from which get at one specific. The tension created by these policies frequently triggered unrest in the city, including most notably the Mau Mau movement of the 1950s. Nairobi as its capital gained independence from Great Britain. Among the city's architectural landmarks are the Kenyatta International Conference Center, the Parliament Building and City Hall, the Law Courts, the Roman Catholic Cathedral, and the Jamia Mosque. There is also a well-planned commercial center.